Hi, welcome to Daily Dose of Anime Recaps. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the first four episodes of the series, The Shadow House. Faceless nobles live in a large house while several living dolls do their house chores. Do the dolls have a purpose of existence or are they created to satisfy their masters? Before we begin, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss the next episodes. At the start of the episode, Emiliko wakes up for her first day at work to serve Shadow Mistress Kate. She gets ready for work while a slice of bread is being delivered into her room through a small ventilator. After breakfast, she takes an elevator to go to her mistress's room. Kate wakes up and pours water for herself while Emilico greets her mistress, informing her that she is the new doll who will be serving her starting today. While scrubbing the floor, Emilico can't help but stare at her mistress's faceless face. She's curious to know what the shadows really look like. Kate knows that Emilico is staring at her, so she tells her that she doesn't like others looking into her eyes. But Kate quickly sighs with relief, saying no one can see a shadow's face. Kate then explains about Soot, the black mass that emanates from shadow people, including hers due to anger or other negative emotions. She tells Emilico that she is currently feeling anxious, which is why she is continuously emanating Soot at the moment. Emilico understands and brooms away all the soot that has been gathering on the floor. In the following scene, Kate decides to go have a bath while Emilico cleans Kate's model statue. But given her clumsiness, Emilico mistakenly breaks the statue and immediately apologizes to her mistress. Kate doesn't seem to mind and tells her to clean it right away. Emilico's first day at work couldn't get any better when she feels dizzy and falls, breaking a flower vase. Nonetheless, she gathers her courage and gets up, only to fall once again. Next, Emilico tries to clean the spills of the flower vase with her dress. Kate arrives at the scene and lectures her on how her clothes aren't for cleaning and that the Shadows family's living dolls aren't mere servants. Since the Shadows don't have faces, it is hard to distinguish family members in their family, so their living dolls serve as their faces. That's why it's important for Emilico to maintain her appearance instead of scrubbing her dress on the floor. Emilico apologizes and adds she still doesn't know much about the Shadows family. Suddenly, Emilico starts crying that she doesn't have a long time to live and apologizes to her mistress for being unable to spend any more time. Kate worries, but when Emilico's stomach makes a weird sound, she realizes her doll just hasn't eaten much, thus making her feel weak. It turns out that Emilico didn't eat her full breakfast in the morning, thinking she had to share it with her mistress. So Kate provides her with a piece of fluffy bread, and hungry Emilico devours it in a minute. Later that night, Emilico thanks Kate for the bread and tells her mistress that she is now full of energy. She then kisses Kate goodnight before going to bed. The following morning, Emilico notices Kate making a soot man out of her soot. She jumps in with delight, surprising Kate. The two then spend their day playing cards and Kate also teaches Emilico to read a book. Before going to bed, Emilico wishes she could study more to serve her mistress better. Kate agrees to continue teaching her if Emilico wakes up an hour earlier for cleaning. The following morning, however, Emilico oversleeps and hurriedly goes to her mistress's room to check on her. Kate sits angrily on her bed, while profusely emanating her soot. She then orders Emilico to clean the mess and heads to the bathroom. Later, Emilico reports to Kate she finished cleaning, but she has black soot all over her body. Kate wants Emilico to wash up, but when Emilico returns, she still has some leftovers behind her ears. Kate then wipes the soot off her doll, while Emilico wonders if if all the Shadows' houses have living dolls of their own. Kate explains that they all get a living doll as recognition of their coming of age. Kate also gives Emilico some makeovers and tells her that she is her identity. They play dress up and Emilico tells Kate that she is her mirror. Kate smiles when Emilico adds that she will try her best to keep her mistress happy. The next morning, Emilico goes on about her usual chores, eats her bread and gets ready to serve her mistress. She greets her mistress and opens the bedroom curtains. Meanwhile, Kate explains she usually admits soot during her sleep, but this morning is worse than usual. Emilico doesn't mind cleaning the mess since she loves her mistress so much. One day, Emilico has to go outside to clean the whole mansion. She is nervous as she has never been out Outside. Mia, another living doll that lives in the room above Emilico's, introduces herself and asks Emilico to come out. 
She then takes her to the Great Hall of the Shadow's house, and Emilico is surprised to see so many living dolls scrubbing and cleaning the house together. Mia tells her that the house is so big that their cleaning duties never end, even with so many dolls. She then introduces Emilico to Rosemary and Lou. Rosemary tells Emilico that they four are a cleaning team, and that she is the team leader since she is the oldest one. Meanwhile, Emilico is surprised and falls straight to the floor, as she didn't expect so many dolls in such a huge area outside her and her mistress's room. Rosemary hands over a cleaning kit and soot suit, which are used for deep cleaning. She and Mia then sing a song while they carry out their chores happily. Later, Emilico returns to her room and tells Kate about her adventure outside. She starts singing the song Rosemary taught her and starts cleaning the shelves. Unfortunately, her hand slips away and gets Kate's treasured stuffed doll soaked in water. Kate immediately lashes out and once again starts emitting her soot profusely. Emilico tries to clean the soot off the ceiling, but it just wouldn't come off. She then cries alone, thinking about how she failed her mistress, but she gathers her courage and decides to fix the stuffed doll. Later, she gives the stuffed doll to Kate, who eventually forgives her. Emilico also shows Kate that she's made one for herself and calls him Raleigh. One day, while cleaning the windows, Raleigh falls down her pocket and when Emilico tries to catch him, she too falls off and lands on a bushy garden below. Kate immediately goes down to help Emilico, who has some bruises on her knees. While they return to their rooms, they stumble upon Mia and her shadow mistress, but Mia doesn't seem like herself at the time. She copies Mistress Sarah's facial expressions and words. Sarah calls Emilico a failure, as she hasn't been trained to mirror her mistress's face for their debut. She also makes fun of Kate before noting that their lord grandfather will surely discard them. Later that night, Emilico wonders what Sarah meant about the debut and who their lord grandfather is. The following morning, Emilico has a new class to attend with her team, so that they can teach her more about the Shadow's house. She meets Mia outside her room, who explains that she wasn't herself the other day because she was controlled by Mistress Sarah's emotions. Meanwhile, Rosemary and Lou join in and decide to give Emilico a tour of the house. First, they show around the Hall of Implements, where they keep their brooming kit. Next, the classroom where the living dolls can study letters. Meanwhile, Emilico notices a picture board and Rosemary says that the picture is of living dolls' formal suits that they have to wear on their debut day. She explains that the debut day is an important ceremony where the competency of both Shadow and Doll will be judged and whether they will be an asset to the Shadow's family. Once the Shadow's family debuts, they are said to have a face, which is a sign of adulthood. Rosemary then reveals that along with Emilico, Lou is also yet to debut with her mistress. Emilico, however, worries that her debut mightn't go well. Suddenly, their conversation is interrupted by an emergency ring, alerting them about the Phantoms. While heading to the Hall of Implements and getting their equipment, Mia explains that the Phantom is a cluster of scorches or soot that gathers together and begins to move with ill intent. The team, along with the other dolls, gather around when they see a large Phantom. A Lady Star Bearer, the commander of the living dolls, uses the dolls to attack the monster, but when they strike it with a hammer, it only explodes into small pieces of scorch, causing them more trouble. Mia grabs Emilico's hand and chases the Scorches, while Rosemary and Lou follow them behind. When they arrive at a room, Mia guesses that the Scorches are behind a painting, and when she and Emilico strike from behind the painting, the Scorches jump over Rosemary's head. Then they completely cover her face, taking control of her body and creating a new phantom. Lou remembers from her manual that phantoms can kill with enough water and tells it to Emilico, who immediately brings a huge huge water vase and pours it over the monster. Emilico saves the day, but Rosemary suffers from the soot sickness since Scorches had entered her body. She is then taken by the first aid team for further medical help. The following day, Emilico worries if Rosemary will be fine, and Mia asks her not to worry since Rosemary is the strongest on their team. Mia then takes Emilico for a bath that day, and the pair enjoy and have fun together. After their bath, Rosemary comes over to greet them and tells them that she drank enough water Water to drink all the soot away from her system. Emilico becomes elated to learn that Rosemary is now fit and well. 
Later, Emiliko talks about her day to Kate while serving tea for her. She hopes that she will be able to spend a more wonderful time with their friends. Meanwhile, her stuffed toy Raleigh moves in her pocket and flies straight upwards before landing on Emiliko's hands. It turns out that Emiliko made Raleigh and fixed Kate's stuffed doll with the help of the same soot man Kate was making earlier. So, since the soot is linked with Kate, she can actually make the toys move. This also comes off as a surprise for Kate since she didn't know she could move stuffed toys. She instead believed that their lord grandfather is the only one that had the power to do so. Later that night, Emiliko writes in her journal and notes that soot can be made to move as Kate did. But she also wonders why her mistress can make the soot move and if someone was making the phantom move earlier. Just then, Kate rings her and informs her that their debut is near and that they have to study together tomorrow. The following day, the ladies' start bearer, also known as Barbie, summons all the dolls to discuss the phantom mayhem. She blames Rosemary and her team for letting go of the monster. Mia cannot bear the unreasonable blame and cuts Barbie mid-conversation, explaining that they were merely fulfilling their cleaning duties. The fierce and rude Barbie lashes out in anger for cutting her conversation and kicks Mia on her stomach. Emilico immediately rushes in to help her friend and screams at Barbie for being so mean. Barbie has had enough of incompetent dolls and readies to hit Emilico, but luckily, Sean, a male living doll, pushes her back with his cleaning stick, calling it a mistake later. Another male doll, Ricky, saves Barbie from falling on the floor and hits Sean on his stomach for disrespecting Barbie. Barbie gets back to her form but is once again interrupted by a clumsy doll, Rum, who drops her kit on the floor. She then shifts her attention to Rum, calling her the dimwit who unleashed the phantom. Emilico knows she isn't to blame, so she stands up for her. Barbie decides to give them a last chance, so she assigns Sean, Emilico, and Rum for night watch to try and find an explanation behind the phantom mayhem. And if they fail during their duties, she will report it to the adults living on the next wing of the house. Later that night, Sean, Emilico, and Rum meet at the Great Hall and start searching for anything unusual. A couple of days go by, but they cannot find any clue about the phantom. On their fifth day, Sean brings a blanket for them to sleep in the small hall, since the watch has been disturbing his sleep routine. Emilico initially wants to keep on searching, but eventually agrees that the watch has been hampering in her performance of her service to Mistress Kate as well. Meanwhile, Rum stays silent, not speaking even a word since day one. In the next scene, the three lay together on the ground and Rum finally opens her mouth blaming herself for getting Emilico and Sean into trouble. But Emilico thinks otherwise. They then hear someone coming in their direction, and Rum, fearing that it's the Phantom once again, runs away into the darkness. It turns out that it's a veiled doll, whose duty is to distribute food and clothes to other dolls. Meanwhile, Rum sits alone in a dark hallway and cries as she has always been a failure, and that nobody is coming to save an inept doll like her. On the other hand, Sean and Emilico venture into the restricted hallway in the front part of the house to search for rum. They instead discover that dolls who try to run away from the house are immediately eliminated by a trap of arrows. The pair then hurriedly head back after hearing rum scream from a back hallway. They follow the sound and finally see rum curled up alone in the darkness. Milico immediately hugs her, but the three soon are attacked by scorches and a phantom. Luckily, Milico and Sean manage to clobber the phantom with Sean's blankets. They then search around the room for any clue about the phantom and discover that soot leaked from a trap door that was rusted and broken. The soot then gather together to form a phantom. Emilico rejoices with happiness and hugs Rum as the case is finally solved. She then takes out a piece of bread from her pocket and shares it with her friends.